The New York Mets have made another addition to their bullpen as they have re-signed right-handed reliever Adam Ottavino to a one-year, four-and-a-half-million dollar deal. In this video, I'm going to react to the Adam Ottavino news, give my take on it if I believe it is a good fit. If you've watched me before and you've been watching the Mets Weekly Podcast this past year or so, you're kind of going to know what I'm going to say when it comes to Adam Ottavino. If you do enjoy this video, though, reacting to the latest New York Mets news, make sure to hit the like button at the ballpark. Slide into the comment section. What are your thoughts on the Adam Ottavino deal? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What other relievers should the New York Mets be targeting? Because their bullpen could still use some more work. And if you are new to the channel or you want to make my day, you can subscribe. It is always greatly appreciated. And to those of you who are subscribed already, you know the drill. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell a stranger, tell anybody. You make a Google account for them and you subscribe to the channel. Any support I get is always greatly appreciated. So Adam Adovino is a guy that we know plenty about. After watching him these past couple years with the New York Mets, we've definitely seen some mixed results. Adam Adovino was a pleasant surprise when the New York Mets first acquired him. After he had just had a bad season with the Boston Red Sox, he ended up performing very well. But with his advanced age being in his late 30s and knowing how inconsistent relievers could be, I was not in favor of the Mets bringing him back for a second year. I thought that that was not a good move to do. I feel like we've seen it time and time again. Just to give you a New York Mets example, Look what happened with Aaron Loop, who was someone actually did want the Mets to bring back. You saw what happened the very next year. He was nowhere near the same pitcher that he was for the Mets. Same goes for Justin Wilson, another guy that I wanted the Mets to bring back. Then the next year, he was nowhere near the same guy. And I felt that after seeing what happened with those guys, you don't want to make the same mistake with Adam Adovino. But the New York Mets did decide to bring him back, and you saw what happened as he was nowhere near the same pitcher. Now, win-loss record is not something you really want to use for relievers. There are a lot of factors that go into it when it comes to relievers. Sometimes a guy gets a win and he had nothing to do with them winning. If anything, he actually blew the game and he still could get the win if it was a tied game. But when you look at his win-loss record from 2022, he was he had six wins and three losses compared to 2023 where he had one win and seven losses. So you got to see you had six wins versus seven losses in the span of a year. And the numbers that back that up is that Adam Adovino, another number which some people don't love using when it comes to relievers, but earned run average, Adam Adovino had a 206 ERA in 2022 compared to a 321 ERA in 2023. So going up a full run is never a good sign. And to take it one step further, Adam Adovino pitched the same amount of games, but he did pitch four less innings. And in those four less innings, he gave up more runs, he walked significantly more batters, he hit more batters. I mean, he just did everything worse the following season. He was just a flat-out worst pitcher in every aspect. And again, that just seemed very obvious, seeing his inconsistencies these past few years, for him to have a good year, the fact that they relied that he was going to have a good year next year, I thought was a mistake at the time, and it ended up holding true. And I think the fact that he is now 38... I think he's going to be even worse than he was last year, yet the New York Mets decide to bring him back. And this was surprising to me considering the fact that we have the new GM slash president of baseball operations in David Stearns. I thought that maybe he'd want to go a different route and not bring back the same person that Billy Epler had. But he did decide to bring back Adam Adovino. And to me, I just think that of the relievers that were available on the market, especially even right now, he's not the guy I would have been going after for. He would have been towards the bottom of my list. There are some other options out there who are better fits for the Mets. It just doesn't make sense for me for the Mets to pick somebody like Adam Adovino when you have a guy like Ryan Stanek still out there just waiting to be signed, who is a absolutely perfect fit for the Mets, yet they decided to get Adovino. It doesn't make sense to me that a guy like Wandy Peralta, who I believe has more to provide for the Mets as a better fit with his age, being left-handed, his recent results, I think Peralta's a better fit, yet the Mets decided to take Adam Adovino. And I think to take it one step further, if we want to put a lot of stock in the report that Andy Martino had on SNY when he said that the New York Mets have around $10 million to spend, and right now they are prioritizing bullpen over DH, if you're telling me that you prioritize Adam Adovino over a guy like Jorge Soler or even anyone else that's out there from the designator hit a market, if you prioritize him over those DHs, 
That makes zero sense to me. The fact that Adam Adovino wasn't very good last year, he was blowing games, he's only going to be worse, and you chose him over a DH, which in my opinion, you really need. I don't like that they're totally counting on Mark Vientos when they're also already counting on Brett Beatty. I think that counting on two unproven young players is pretty risky when you are a team that's in win-now mode, and when you have the payroll that the Mets do... You're kind of in win now mode. You might have, this might be the last year you have Pete Alonso. You can't be taking all these different chances and things like that. You got to get guys who are more proven. And if you have a glaring weakness and you have some guys who are perfect fits, you get those guys and address it. I mean, it's really not rocket science here. So when you look at the Mets bullpen now, obviously you have Edwin Diaz as the closer, no doubt about it. You gave him the big extension. We'll see how he bounces back coming off that big time knee injury. You feel like he should be okay. So obviously you have him. You have Brooks Raley coming back for a second year, who all in all pitched pretty well. He got off to a rocky start, but then he finally got into his groove and he looked pretty solid. You have Jorge Lopez, who you're really counting as a bounce back candidate because this is a guy who was an all star, then he struggled. So we'll see if he can kind of get back on track. And then after that, now you bring Adam Adovino back. Again, I think he's going to be even worse than he was last year. So we'll see what happens there. And then after that, it really is a bunch of guys who. You don't really know what you're going to get out of. As of right now, Drew Smith is still here, which to me, I really can't believe. Because you want to talk about blowing games and being the result for losses, the reason why the Mets lose games. Drew Smith, it feels like every time he comes in the game, he's probably the reason why you're going to lose. So I can't believe that that guy is still on this team after all these years and how many games he's blown as he's continued to get worse. So that also just amazes me that he's still on this roster. But other than that, you're looking at some of these other guys like Austin Adams and all these other guys that the Mets have brought in, whether it be a minor league deal or a bunch of one-year deals. You're going to see a lot of guys that we haven't seen before in Met uniforms who don't have proven track records. It's not like they've been guys who have put together good year after good year they just have some different pitches and stuff that David Stearns likes about them and feels like he can get something out of and when it comes to pitching I have tried to be open-minded with it and try to say you know what David Stearns this is his thing he's done a great job with it in Milwaukee he knows how to find pitching I'm going to trust that he knows what he's doing and I'm not going to say that I know everything I'm going to say David Stearns knows more than me when it comes to evaluating pitchers and he's going to find the guys who can be good because he did it year after year in Milwaukee bunch of guys you never heard of they turn out to be very successful but I think that Adam Adovino no matter what advanced numbers you want to use analytics this that and the other whatever things David Stearns looks at, I don't see how Adam Adovino is better. I don't, I don't know what it is that he sees because I really don't see it. I am totally 100% thinking that he's going to be even worse as he was last year. So again, I just don't think that is the right approach to take. I was hoping again that the Mets would have learned their lessons from trying to stay away from pitchers who are 38 and above. I think that's not really a good business approach. Higher injury risk. You also have the fact that their results just diminish as you get older. I mean, that's just a common thing with baseball. Father time is undefeated. So I think that when you look at something like that, you baseball has been going on forever. That's a constant trend. And for Stearns to just totally ignore that and be like, you know what, I'm just going to bring back Adam Adovino anyway, I don't really like that. I, I wonder if it's something where he's putting maybe a little too much of an emphasis on, well, he's played in New York before, so he'll be fine. Because when you look at all the former Yankees that Stearns has brought in, and you can kind of say that with Adovino, he was a Yankee before he was a Met. Yes, he was with the Red Sox in between, but still, I do just find that very interesting that with the players that the Mets have brought in to Major League Con- contracts a lot of them have been former Yankees so I don't know if that's something that we'll see if it's a common thing with David Stearns but it is something that a few of these guys do have in common and that's pretty much the only thing they have in common really besides the fact that most of them had bad years and you're counting on a lot of reclamation projects and that's been my biggest critique of the offseason has been the fact that they've constantly been getting these guys who didn't have good seasons last year they are counting on these guys to bounce back because they were good a few years ago you can do it from time to time time but I don't think you should do it for every single guy you bring in I just think that's a big time risk I mean some of them may work out I don't think all of them will I would be surprised if they did listen I hope they work out I hope Adam Adovino is awesome like he was a couple years ago where him and Edwin Diaz were the great tag team getting things done Adam Adovino was doing an awesome job in the eighth inning getting all those holds he ended up having to save around 12 games to the Mets this past season due to the Edwin Diaz injury so I understand he has that closer experience and 
every now and then he allows you to use Edwin Diaz in some different roles, you know, using it in the most important spots in the highest leverage situations. So if the hard viewer is up in the eighth inning, you can go to Diaz then and then maybe go to out of you in the ninth if he's rolling and he's on a good stretch. You could do it from time to time. But again, I think that there were other relievers out there who were younger better fits and just overall better pitchers than Adam Adovino is. Now, if Ryan Stanley gets a multi-year deal, if Wani Peralta gets a multi-year deal, then okay, I understand it. The New York Mets have wanted to do all these one-year deals, especially when it comes to relievers. I totally get that. I agree with that. You should be trying to do one-year deals with relievers because you see a guy like Adam Adovino, if you sign him to a two-year deal, three-year deal, and each year he gets worse, all of a sudden that contract looks bad. Look what happened when the Mets did the multi-year deal to Dylan Patantas. Look what happened when they did the multi-year deal to Jerry's Familia. And just look all around baseball. It's something that continuously happens. So I totally understand trying to stick with one-year deals. So we'll see what happens. I'll, we'll wait and see it out. But I'll tell you what, if Ryan Stanek signs for a one-year deal, even if it's more money than Adam Adovino got, it's just a really bad move in my opinion. I just I disagree with it. I hope I'm wrong because I want to see the Mets do well. You may think that I'm negative Nancy and things like that, but I'm a Mets fan. I've just been hurt year after year by them because they continue to make the same mistakes. And I think that this is another mistake that they're making. And you see what the results are. I just want the team to win. So I'm totally okay with with being wrong and having all these guys play great. Mets get back into the playoffs. I would be so happy. But in my opinion, if I'm being frank about it, I don't think this is a good move. So that's my opinion on it. Again, let me know what you guys think about this signing. And until the next one, be safe, be smart, and let's go Mets. Please get a DH.